Hello everybody! So today is finally the day that I released my second Tips and Tricks video. It's a long time coming, I'm sorry, but I'm very excited for this because I feel like I've discovered a hidden gem in Siege, and that is Ying. And I know what you're thinking. Ying's been out for what? Two, three years now? She's been played to death, there's nothing new with her, but recently in the Burn Horizon DLC, they altered the way her candelas work just a little bit. However, this has changed the way I play her drastically. It's a huge change and a completely new playstyle, and I'm very excited to finally expose it to the world. And if you're not already aware, the way that they changed it is they reversed the timer on the candela. So, now that if you throw it without cooking, it'll immediately start rolling. Whereas before, if you threw it, it would immediately flash. And People perceive this as a nerf, and in a way it's a nerf, however, if you properly use these rolling mechanics, it is a huge buff to the operator, and I feel like a lot of people don't yet realize this. Now to properly utilize these rolling mechanics, it's important that you understand how the mechanics work, so I, I have to cover this, this is a very important step uh, in understanding how to use Ying to her fullest potential. So first things first, candelas cannot bounce off the ground. The moment candelas touch the floor, they are locked in a rolling animation. These rolling animations will always go straight and in the direction it hits the ground. So even if you roll it into some kind of obstacle, such as a wall, it'll still go in a straight line. For example, I'm facing northwest here, it'll hug the wall, but still continue to go northwest. Now despite these rolling mechanics being so linear, you could still do some very creative and complex plays with it, because the direction at which it rolls is not based on the direction you throw it, but rather the direction that the candela lands on the ground, and you could change that direction by banking them off walls. And here's a very simple example of me doing just that. I bank it off the wall, I redirect the candela's roll towards the center of the room right behind the table, effectively flashing the echo and giving me a free kill. Now the beauty about this mechanic and why I think that recent change in Burnt Horizon is more of a buff than a nerf is because you can now roll consecutive candelas from complete safety. You don't have to expose yourself anymore to toss these candelas. And here's an example of exactly that. In this situation, I'm stuck in server fighting against a mirror window. So what I do is I bank my first candela off the wall, rolling it in front of the mirror, flashing anyone behind bomb or anybody looking through the window. And then my second candela will be banked off the door frame, rolling it into red hall, flashing anyone behind the mirror window. And this is all without ever exposing myself to the mirror window itself. Again, a play that was never possible prior to this recent change that she's had. Now the level of creativity you could bring to this gadget is actually insane. Like the positions you can hit with these candelas, if you practice enough, is just ridiculous. And it's unlike any other gadget in this game. Like no other gadget could do what the candelas do. Now just to demonstrate how ridiculous you can make these plays, I came up with this one on Oregon, uh, where you throw a candela at the wall to bank it off into another wall, which will then redirect it into kid's room. Uh, you do it from complete safety all the way from the closet and are able to flash anybody that ends up in kid's room, which is a very common position. Now just to demonstrate how much distance you can actually cover with these candelas, I came up with this one where you throw one from the basement stairs and hit the back default mirror. And I haven't had use with this specific candela play, but I hope it just gives you a good sense of just how much ground you can possibly cover. Alright, so now that we got the mechanics out of the way, it is time for the hard truths of Ying, and that is, more often than not, you will not be flashing your enemy. Now I know what you're thinking, Macy, if you can't flash the enemy, Ying is trash. Well, it's not really the case, because the use that I get out of her is using the candelas to manipulate their positions. People know how to dodge candelas, and more often than not, they will run away to avoid being flashed. However, you can use this as an opportunity to force them out of their position and gain position for yourself. So in this instance, I saw Jaeger was playing yellow stairs, and I throw this candela towards yellow stairs knowing he's not going to be flashed, but knowing that he's going to run away, allowing me to take that position. Now once that position is established, I wait for his inevitable return and then cut him off his rotation. This one happens to be a freebie, but it's not always a freebie. However, I did gain the advantageous positioning. And that's the thing, people 
when playing Ying, expect free kills. Just blinded people laying on the floor, freebies. But it's not the case. You kind of have to find indirect ways to get kills with this gadget. Now just to expand on the whole concept of using candelas to help advance positioning, one of my favorite tactics with this is not necessarily to force players out of their own position, but rather to block a line of sight that they may potentially be holding. So this match that I had the other day on Skyscraper was actually the perfect example of me using candelas to prevent the enemies from holding a very specific line of sight. And I used that little window of opportunity to set me up for a much more aggressive play. So I just wanted to break down my thought process for this particular play just so you have a, a good sense of what's going on in my head and what's going on in the round. So I killed the guy in Geisha and I know that the defenders are aware of my position in Geisha. So surely there's a defender on site holding that Geisha door preventing me from peeking. It's a common angle behind the bomb that's always done. So with that said, I toss a candela at the doorway of T just to stop him from holding that angle momentarily. And during this moment, I throw a second candela, which blocks the line of sight from Drum, a position I know that is being occupied by the enemy. And then finally, with my third candela, I throw it more aggressively in the sight to allow me to push into an advance in the objective. And keep in mind, when I do this, I never expect anybody to actually be flashed. This is just an opportunity for me to displace the enemy's positioning, disorient them, and simply give me that window of opportunity to just enter the doorway safely and take on a more direct gunfight. If they're flashed, hooray, I got a bonus. If they're not flashed, I still kind of have them off balance. And again, giving me a bit of an advantage in that situation. And just to drive the point home, here's another good example where uh, defense had control of diffuser and I had to push through and make my entry through. I had no choice, but I used the candela to just keep him off the line of sight for a second. I know he's not flashed, so I still contest him directly. But again, those small windows of opportunity just give you enough to make the plays that you need. Now, as I'm making this tips and tricks video, I started to worry that I might be encouraging players to overcomplicate their situations. So I kind of just wanted to take this moment to just give a friendly reminder that not every situation requires a complicated solution. Very often, a simple fully cooked candela with your good old fashioned flash and clear is all you need to deal with the enemies at hand. So please just take every situation at face value and try to assess what is required for that particular situation. Okay, so moving on, I did want to cover one last mechanic. I wanted to keep this separate from the previous part because it's so wildly different, and that is the fusing of the candela. Now, admittedly, I use this mechanic less often than the primary way of deploying these candelas. However, that doesn't make them any less useful given the right circumstance, and there's some interesting stuff that you could do with it. So, first and foremost, once again, it's useful to know how exactly the mechanic works, just so you can be more proficient with it. And the way it is, is very simple. Once it's placed onto a surface, it'll shoot in a straight line from right to left, six micro flashes. And in this particular example, you can see it runs along the red carpet from east to west. But if I orient it 90 degrees to the left, it'll instead go from north to south, underneath the staircase. And this just allows you to be more precise with how you fuse your candelas and just be more accurate in whether or not you get the flashes on your target. And of course, this also applies to walls as well, uh, from right to left. So how does one get the most out of this fusing mechanic? Well, not to discourage people from fusing any walls, because there's definitely some potential there, but... I find that fusing the floors above and using this mechanic vertically rather than horizontally is the play because all the mechanics that we spoke about previously where we bank and roll are far more effective ways of flashing a room horizontally. So this leads me to the breaching charge candela combo and it is a fantastic way to assist you in your vertical play. And it's very simple. Before breaching the floor and opening up lines of sight, you simply fuse it. If your candelas land as you breach the floor, you flash the enemy and give yourself free kills. And it's especially good if you have those super aggressive defenders trying to challenge you on these angles because you could deny them their ability to do so.
Now, before I conclude this video, I just wanted to add a few miscellaneous facts and tips uh, that might further assist you in all the little details of Ying. And since we were just talking about vertical plays, the first tip is you can throw candelas through the bars of the floor, but you cannot roll them through the bars on the floor. It's kind of weird, but that's how it works. Now tip two, it's good to know that candelas can be shot. I don't think they can be shot out of midair. I might be wrong on that, but 100% they can be shot while they are rolling and destroyed. However, in the 72 hours that I have on Ying, I have never once had an enemy shoot my candela. But I have had an instance where I rolled them into electrified walls and electrified wire. So definitely keep an eye out for that because they can destroy your candelas as well. For tip three, is a good way to deal with Jaeger ADSs. Now, if you don't have a friendly Thatcher, Twitch, or even somebody with flashbangs to burn the ADS, you can actually effectively burn it yourself by using the fuse mechanic. Because the candela shoots out six micro flashes, you can burn up to all three ADSs if they're close enough and within range. And my final tip to you is to be patient. This operator, even if you understand the concept, from my experience, I found that it still takes a lot of practice to get a natural flow of what's going on. As I was playing and as I'm in all the various situations, I found that I had to really think about what I was doing and try and like really work it out what's going to happen. And the more you do this, the more you practice, the more natural and quick these things happen where you can react on the fly and react accordingly. So be patient and practice. It doesn't just come overnight. So in conclusion, Ying is no longer brain dead. She used to be flash, 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 run, run, gun, and that was it. But now you have to actually think one, two, even three steps ahead with these candelas and really understand the physics behind how they roll. So uh, I love these tactical ops. These are what I live for in this game, and I'm so happy that I've discovered this, and I hope I can introduce this kind of play style to many others. If you got to the end of the video, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this tips and tricks. I do want to do more in the future, so keep an eye out for that. I always appreciate all the love and support. Believe me, I read all the comments on my channel. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys, and I hope to see you in the next video. And until then, take care, guys.